Hi, good afternoon. Didn't think I was going to make a video today. I'm just laughing because Gigi's trying to get through to me. Ellie can't get past all the stuff I've got on here. Come on side, darling. He can't get past. He's going to sit on everything I'm trying to show you. That's the kind of dog that he is. You put everything down for two seconds and he sits on it. Right, let's get everything out of the way so you can sit down, sir. Right. <laughs> this has got the right name, the virus, because it's catching. Yeah? Just finished the second one off. This was a yarn called Reflections. It was by a company called, oh God, not Classic Yarns. Mm -hmm. Left the label in the other room. Either way, it's discontinued because I've had it so, so long. And that's what it is. It's took one ball. It's classed as double knitted. But no way is that a double knit. No way in the world. It's what I would call a four ply, what you would probably call sock weight fingering. Anyway, it's not quite as big as the first shawl I did because I can only do what I can do, which is one ball, and then I run out of yarn. This is another ball I found without a label. Um, I think this one was the, um, like the first one, which was James C. Brett Moonlight Sonata, I think. Again, it's labelless. And that's what I've got. I'm going to have to break this cycle, make something else. Although I have um, ordered two colours of the yarn that, um, oh gosh, you know, I'm, I'm brain dead today, you have to excuse me. If you watch Lisa's Pine Notes, um, when she's not doing the show in the, um, oh come on. Hello, brain. What are you waking up today? Oh, it's the final one anyway. The lace weight one she's ordered. <coughs> she's made a shawl. She's making a shawl for a moment, I think. Well, I've ordered two balls of that. Different colours. Um, two balls of that. I managed to find it. What I want to start next is that I get the crochet exclamation mark magazine online. So I can't show you what's in the magazine because it's online. But I did print this out because I love it so much. <laughs> oh, Gigi's trying to get comfy, he can't. It's just me and Sue entirely that, isn't it? It's, um, Gigi, will you get comfy, please? He hates it when I'm wearing trousers. He likes when I've got a skirt on so he can sit in like the hammock bit, you know, between your legs. It's called the Weatherall Pullover and it's done in a, a number two weight yarn and but it's on a four millimeter and a five millimeter crochet hook i don't do letters it's i think it says g and h but i don't understand letters at all because we don't use them in the uk so anyway it's like a very dorish channy really isn't it with its open work starburst pattern it's by oh it's robin Ch chuchula so she also does not work lacy things. I should have known it was one of the two designers, shouldn't I? Well, I have been buying for me. I know I shouldn't, and I know I said I wouldn't, but I have been buying for me. I saw them online and I couldn't resist them. Uh, it's called Dancing World Limited. It's on um, eBay. And these, uh, they were on, whoops, Bidding. So I thought, I'll stick my bid in for nine ninety nine. I'll not get them. They'll go up to some phenomenal price. Anyway, I got them both. Quite brightly coloured, but I do love these. You know, gypsy type skirts. I don't know how much of it you can see. Now this one actually smells a little bit musty. So that's going to get rinsed through before I wear that one. Don't know where they've had it stored. And the other one is this one, which has got my favourite colours in it, which is dark pinks, reds and purples. That's the back of it. They're just made out of strips really. They're very simple if you know how to sew, but hello, you know. 
my sewing skills went out of the window about 20, 30 years ago. Well, we've had a bit of an exciting morning. The window men came and they finished off the front door and they finished off the porch. So all they've got to do now is the, they call them soffits, I don't know whether you know what they are, the facings that go at the front of the house right at the top of new guttering. So I've got to do that, which they're coming at the weekend to do that. But apart from that, everything is done. So that's great. Family are not here. Dogs are not here. So it's a peaceful day. Just me and Gigi. There he is. Hello, Gigi. Hello, Gigi. Say hello. Say hello to your fans. Gigi's too busy. Trying to see out the window to see what's going on. Well, I know the other video I had a bit of a sort of a beef with ice yarns, but it wasn't with ice yarns. I've loved ice yarns and I've uh, ordered from them for many, many years. If you know me, I'm like the ice queen. But um, anyway, apparently, um, oh, I can't. Do you know, if I had a brain today, I would be doing wonderful things, but I don't. Anyway, a lady saw my video and saw that I was upset with the colour of the white and everything. And she mentioned it to Ice Yarn and they're um, going to be sending me a nice little surprise package. So, But I did get a, a package from Ice Yarn this morning, but it wasn't a surprise because it was one I ordered myself. Um, it, uh, they had it on offer. It turns out to be about, oh gosh, by the time you add the postage in and divide it by 16, I think it turned out to be about £1.50 maybe a ball, which isn't bad because it's good quality. Their yarn is always good quality. Can you just sit there, Gigi, a minute, please? He's just not happy because I've put him on there now. Yes, you can come back on my knee in a minute. Yes, I know. Now, this is the cream I would have liked the other yarn to have been. That's what I call an ice cream. An ice cream. Not an ice cream, no. Well, it could be ice cream. <laughs> it's a nice cream. That's the one. And it's, um, it's called air wool. It's a mixture of wool and acrylic, I think. Yes, 50% wool, 50% acrylic, and Gigi is now going to bar because somebody's gone by with a pram. A trolley or whatever you want to call them in the US. So I got, these are 50 gram balls and it's quite thick if you can see it. Although it does class it as a double knitted, it's quite a sturdy one. So I bought 16 of those. And I only ordered it the other day and it came today, which was why I was a bit worried when the other one didn't arrive because you know it was delayed in the customs and stuff. Uh, <laughs> excuse me laughing. Just let me see if you can see him. I knew that's what he was going to do. Sit on the pile of fabric and dresses and clothes and everything. Gigi's not happy unless he's sitting on clothes. Preferably ones that you've worn, yeah? And this is the other colour. I only added two colours. This one I think is lovely because it reminds me very much. I tried to order three colours but the other colour had already sold out. So this is the one on clearance. Very autumn colours, isn't that lovely? Very autumnal. I think that is gorgeous. Yeah. You'd have to be quick if you want any of this. Um, remember if you're ordering. Right, you look at the price of the yarn, you think, whoa that is so cheap, I'm going to get some. Remember that the cost of the postage is quite high. But what you must do before you go, ah, I'm not paying £15 for postage, blah, blah, blah. Work out like I do, how much it works out of all. Like I paid £24, £25, but I got 16 balls. So you divide 16 into, what, 25, I forget how much it is, it's one pound and whatever. So it doesn't work out that badly because you would pay, I would say two to three pounds in, in the UK for a 50 gram ball of that quality. That's all I'm saying. So don't let the price of the postage put you off. Don't go into an apoplexy shock. When you look at it, you think, well, I'm not paying that for postage. 
I've had that said to me so many times. We really love the wool, but we're not paying that for postage. Just think about how much you would pay for it in the shop. If you can get similar quality in the shop for cheaper, then fine. Do that. I can't, you see. Because I usually pay, I pay normally a lot more for my yarn than you do in the US. Um, even if I order US yarn over here, you would laugh at what I pay for it because you would think, my God, this girl is mad. She's just paid like eight pounds for a skein of yarn that we can pick up for three, three dollars, you know. But that's the way it is. I mean, I dare say if you order yarn from the UK to be posted out to you that this is what happens again. Anyway, what is going on? There's not an awful lot going on, actually. I'm hoping, hoping, I'm going to charge the camera up just in case. I'm hoping that Sue is going to um, call tomorrow. She said she might. <laughs> He's gone to sleep now on the pile of his skirts. I don't know why he loves fabric, but he does. He just loves. If you gave him a big pile of fabric on the floor instead of a bed, he'd sleep quite happily for hours on it. But bless him, he came in this morning and he's running round looking for the girls, you know, the, the dogs, and he's got. And he went round looking in the kitchen, looking in the, everywhere, looking upstairs, looking in the garden, couldn't work out where they'd gone. <laughs> You'll be all right when they come back. Why well, they won't come back until Tuesday, I think. I think they'll come back on Tuesday. My son and his, my daughter in law have gone away for a few days, but. Um, much as I love the dogs, I can manage the dogs okay, but I cannot walk them. And with them being such big dogs, they get a bit giddy, you know, if they don't go out for a walk. So, yeah, I couldn't. <laughs> I love them to bits, don't get me wrong, but I couldn't have coped with them. I couldn't. So, unfortunately, they've had to go to kennels. But I'm going to try and make um, use of the time. <laughs> The reason why I'm using deep stash for everything is, I should explain, when the window man came and he wanted to go into my stash room to put the window in, I hurriedly bought a big pile of those big laundry bags. You've seen them plastic with a zip over the top. You take your laundry to the la laundrette in. So I just stuck the yarn in willy-nilly, you know, any old down, not any style, rhyme, reason, just stuck it all in, zipped it up. Carried it in and stored it all on my bed and in the bedroom while they were doing that window. So, of course, when they finished, I just put it all back in. So it's just like stacked and it's like man mountain in there. So to try to get to any yarn that I want, it's just like, oh, no. And to be honest, I don't want to reassemble all the shelving units that were taken to pieces. Uh, they were plastic shelving units that clipped together. I don't feel like putting them together when my son and daughter-in-law could be moving out anytime soon and I'm getting the back bedroom properly shelved with wooden shelves by the carpenter. So for the time being I'm just opening a bag and it's like surprise, surprise. I just have a look in and see what I can find. And I keep finding all my deep stash because this must be in the nearest bag to the door. Um, things I'd forgotten about, but it's doing me good, doing me good. At least I'm using up deep stash, as you say. Uh, I can get to the white cotton that came the other day and the cream cotton that came today. And of course I can get to this new yarn that's just arrived. So I, can, I won't be short of anything to do. And I've got piles of the acrylic oddments of yarn in the garage. But my son has piled, you know, these like, I think you call them, rubber maids or something, these boxes with lids on. A sun's pile and one on top of the other, like that. So they go up to the top of the garage, so of course the ones I want are usually in the middle. Oh, I'm not going there. <laughs> I do not want to strain my shoulder or my back. I'll reach them down when I have to, yeah, which is whenever. So until whenever, <laughs> They're staying where they are. So there'll be no tours of my craft room for quite some time yet. As usual, the solicitors are still holding up things with my son's house and that. I don't know why everything takes so long, but it does. It 
does. I mean, I, the, the delay with me waiting for my mortgage was the solicitors. They. I wish I lived in a place where you just said, right, I want to borrow some money against the house. There's my deeds. I own it outright. Can I borrow some money? And they went, yes, of course, certainly. How much would you like? There you go. Uh, it took about 10 weeks, I think it's taken. You would think I was asking to borrow unsecured or, you know, borrowed against what I could actually pay back, you know, but if push comes to shove and I don't pay it back, they'll just take it from the house when I die. So what's the problem? They're going to get their money back, plus interest, of course. A vast amount of interest if I don't pay anything back, which I'm going to. I wouldn't want to leave my son about a quarter of my house instead of all of it. <laughs> Not that he's worried, because he was the one who suggested that I did that because I need, you know, these things doing. Decking, the guy is, I believe, back at work, but then he went on his holidays. <laughs> So I've got to wait when he comes back off his holidays before we can even get a quote, before we can even start. And I can't get any quotes for the shower because I need to know how much money I'm juggling with at the end of things. Can't do any internal decorations really because I'm waiting till everything's done, dusted and I can start all over afresh. So we're sort of in limbo. So in the meantime, I'm just sitting in the middle of the chaos and crocheting and looking after little Gigi. It's a good job I've got the temperament that it doesn't worry me. Some people go crazy, they have to be hoovering up and dusting up and doing everything. I did buy a new mop the other day. I did actually buy a mop. I should say I did have a mop, but it was a steam mop. And if you know steam mops, they're okay if your floors, uh, how can I put it, not got grit um, things on it, rubbish on it, you know. But for all that other stuff, you need a proper mop that you mop with. <laughs> the steam mop I will do to get it deep clean when I've done the initial clean, if you know what I'm saying. I should probably get all that done and the hoovering and everything that I've been leaving while the family are away. I just can't do things when they're there. I don't know whether it's me or not. I don't like an audience, you know. <laughs> I don't want somebody saying, you're not dusting that right, you know. I mean, I've got crystal and stuff like that on here that's been neglected. It's not looking sparkly. I love it when it's all washed and I shine the silver up and everything and it looks so sparkly when it catches the light. But that's not been done because I thought, well, what's the point? Because dust will just go in it and make it all dull again. So what was the point? So these are the little chores I'm setting myself while they are away, but no doubt I will just sit here and relax and not do anything at all. <laughs> because that's the way I roll. Anyway, I did say I would give some shout outs to the people that I've watched, didn't I, on um, YouTube. I'll just do the ones that I sort of started off with. I think the very first one I ever watched was Margaret Olander sheepishly sharing and one of the first ones I watched after that was Erin which is Gimme Yarn 418 and I watched Zoe which was 24 karat crochet and Hayley with from Hayley's Hats that's H-A-Y-L-E-E -E, Hayley's Hats uh, and then I watched quite a few from the now sort of defunct whatever it is the channels that there were a lot of people that joined them well, OVW one virtuous woman had one of them and then Laura had another one Laura um, crochet zombie she had another one but they seem to be I don't know nobody didn't put anything on them anymore although I did hear that Laura was going to start something up again soon so I do hope she does and then I gradually found other people through other people, which I'll mention a few more. Some I've only found this last couple of weeks. Uh, some from recommendations that you gave me after the last video, yeah. And another video I started watching recently is Simply Tweet Beings. You know, like beings as in human beings. Um, 
I'm just mentioning them particularly because they're in an RV at the minute because they're sort of travelled from where they used to live coming down south for health reasons and they in the eye well they're not in the eye of the storm they could be in the eye of a storm um, so I'm just hoping that uh, you know everything passes by and anybody else who's in this storm region I hope it passes by your roofs and everything and doesn't stop on the way past anyway that's about it really I'm going to charge up the um, camera just in case Sue comes tomorrow which I hope she does and uh, if she doesn't bring these shawls I'm going to ring her neck with one of her shawls <laughs> sorry Sue if you're watching <laughs> it's like a joke now she comes to the door and I can see she's only got a handbag and I'm going no shawls and she goes well you know <laughs> so I do hope that she's actually going to bring them I still haven't sewn the buttons on the cream cardigan yet and I still got to take photographs of the blue mesh cardigan and of these two virus shawls so that I can put those on Etsy but while I should have been doing the photographs and that, they weren't men were all here. And now it's gone dull. <laughs> you know it's gone to go dull, don't you? Because I've just put a load of washing out. Because I couldn't get up the stairs, because the workmen were working at the bottom of the stairs. I couldn't get up the stairs to get the dirty washing and bring it down. So by the time they'd gone, it was after lunch. And the time I washed it, I pegged it out on the line, the sun went in. Hopefully, it will still dry. Anyway, I'm going to rinse through by hand if I can move Gigi's bed, these two skirts. Or I may leave until tomorrow actually because I don't actually have any room on the line. I used to have three washing lines, and I used to have four washing lines, I beg your pardon. But my son took them down for some reason or other and they oh he was replacing the lines, that's it. And after he nearly throttled himself going out the back door on one of them, he decided that I wasn't having that one anymore and that was the one I used to use the most because it was the most convenient you know it was just by the doorway so I guess who's going to be putting a washing line back again somewhere or another once I get my decking done maybe I'll have somewhere to tie it to or maybe I'll get one of those you know pull up and down dryers or the ones that are like a concertina if I can get one sturdy enough the last one I got used to annoy me Every time I opened it up, one of the little plastic things pinged off it and it was always falling over. And I want a proper, old-fashioned, like, sturdy one, you know, the one that won't blow over in the smallest puff of wind. I'm going to be talking about puffs of wind now and being a bit puffy windy, aren't I? I'm carrying on about nothing. So I'm going to go now and I'm going to charge up the batteries ready for soon, tomorrow. So bye all, hope you all stay nice and safe. Once again to all my new subscribers, hello and I hope you're enjoying my videos. To all my regulars, thank you very much for staying with me. And um, bye for now.